Oh, well, that's nice. I mean, this house is exquisite. I must say, this is exquisite, John. You outdid yourself, girl. <laughs> She's pretty, eh? So this is Miss... Um, how do you want us to say who you are? Miss Crystal Eva? Quartz. Oh, Miss Crystal Quartz. Why did you change it from Avon? So I decided that in order for me to become my new character, that mm-hmm. I needed to leave the old character behind. Because who I am now is not who I was. Okay. So I, developed, or so I decided to change... The name so that it uh it felt like i'd actually done the full transition of the change of who i was mm-hmm. well you know it's so strange i haven't seen you in how many years it's been about 10 now oh my god oh, girl you think about it we've been a girl we, you know what we are blessed oh yes we are we are so blessed we are here and it's nice to meet you athena it's really how, nice to meet you how, how long you been doing drag uh, we're now going on probably six years professionally, mm-hmm. and um, thanks to Crystal also, she's gotten me out there as well as my drag mother to tour around Canada a lot more and mm-hmm. really bring drag to every corner of Ontario. Oh, wonderful. Now, Crystal, what do you think, now that you're doing the competitions across Canada, to bring recognition to not just Canadian um talent but to you know entertainers around um the world here to ontario what do you see the future um in drag here in canada because you as you know for many years like you said i've been producing a lot of these shows and i find it very tough when you don't have enough entertainment or not enough professional entertainers professional. to perform professional mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah so well you know drag around here i find what people are doing here for drag is not necessarily what we grew up for drag right Mm -hmm. so to me everyone's kind of doing this real girl you know Mm -hmm. motif that they're not actually accenting what it is to me to be drag that big larger than life personality Mm -hmm. so i'm hoping with what we're doing now we can kind of switch and show people because we don't have what they have in the states they don't see that big elaborate drag here uh, mm-hmm. like they do down there and so my goal is to bring all the showgirls around ontario and show everybody what i consider good drag mm-hmm. and i think hopefully that'll uh, start inspiring people to start doing some character work because you don't see what we used to do right with it's like mm-hmm. impersonations you you and me are probably one of the only two doing most of it still anyways right so mm-hmm. i think it would be uh Great to see, you know, some something different than just trying to look like a woman. Mm-hmm. Because, you know. Now you, Athena, as a young person, and you know, the internet is a very um, influential and powerful source for you to connect to different audiences around the world. And you being a young performer, what do you think is going to happen now that RuPaul has bought a new um, look? Or or just a difference to the industry. Yeah, I would say the industry is definitely, well, it's become an industry, I think, more um, because of Rue. And like Crystal was saying, drag in the States has been incredibly large for so many years. And here in Canada, I don't think we have the same kind of entertainment or the professionalism that you were kind of mentioning earlier as well. So, Mm -hmm. you know, trying to dig and find those people around different provinces I'm sure is a little difficult but (laughs) yeah yeah but um definitely the internet has been extremely influential in terms of almost what it is like a starter pack or an or a expectation of Mm -hmm. how you should present yourself how you should look and how you should perform but Mm -hmm. that's all television right Mm -hmm. so you need to find that for yourself because those people have done that already Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. it's not all just high kicks and spins and you know, there's characterization and there's, you know, proper lip sync and there is proper training and dancing. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to do stunts, there's training for that too. You don't just have to learn that from, you know, Alyssa Edwards doing it at the finale of RuPaul's Drag Race mm-hmm. because it looked cool. So I think, you know, testing yourself and all those elements, if you really want to learn them, that's pretty much all the work that goes into it. Mm-hmm. So, And one more question. Mm-hmm. Now, John, um, Now that drag is really popular and on television, now there's now now you see everybody in drag, even straight men in drag, and even women in drag doing drag shows. What do you think is going? Do you think the market is going to be 
oversaturated with drag queens that really aren't doing anything for mainstream society as far as, let's say, becoming a real author in life, a real actor with an Oscar, or people that are really doing things, the movers and shakers in the world. What do you think drag, what do you think drag queens are going to play in with that? So I think it's going to be much like, you know, kind of any art right now, right? So there's, anybody can pick up a pencil and draw something, right? And mm -hmm. but there's, and they can call themselves an artist, right? But then when you mm -hmm. go to look at it and you put a Picasso beside, you know, your art, you can see what the artist is. Now, I think some of them kind of, you know, not necessarily give us a bad name, but if people go to a drag show and it's somebody that's amateur and they're running it, they're not quite getting what drag is. And so that kind of scares me. But other than that, you know. No, oh, I lost my train of thought there. It's separating yourself from always being a gimmick. There you go. Right? Mm -hmm. So now you know um, the reason I brought that up is because I'm I'm thinking RuPaul has created this huge industry for a lot of drag performers. Mm -hmm. Not the majority of people have never seen drag shows. Yep. Now, how do you change people's perception to come out and think drag is? worthy to see because even when you see it on RuPaul's drag race and drag shows so you, impressive yeah. yeah so it's 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 missing that Hollywood element that, that, yeah that 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 spark that you get when you're on stage and that is so hard to put on film or in picture and I feel like the only way of getting those people out. It's like, I don't know if you've noticed by my posters, they look really exciting. And I try to create that like neon sign and sparkles and kind of give that people the feeling of what they're going to experience when mm -hmm. they come there. Cause it's a larger than life atmosphere and where you feel, you know, beautiful and welcomed and everything. Right. So mm -hmm. um, now the reason I, the reason I'm asking you um, just one more question. Yeah. Please. Yeah. As many as um, but the reason I'm asking this is because now that, you know, you can only sell so much makeup. Young people, drag performers, they have a limited budget, even yeah. when they're making real money. Yeah. Let's just say you're making money now with drag. How can you afford to buy a house? How can you pay for insurance, health care, food? A lot of um, the LGBT community has decided they want to have children now. And... These are things I'm thinking are going to be very difficult and for you to find a niche that you do yeah. that is going to fill a stadium because eventually the day will come to where RuPaul show will be canceled. Oh yeah, absolutely. Somebody's gonna take over it. So what do the what do these five thousand drag queens that you have had on this popular reality show do after the show is done? Well there's gonna have to create another version of the show, right? Because this is hard to make a living in. Makeup well, is expensive. If, if makeup is expensive, the outfits like I have thousands and thousands of dollars just in rhinestones. Rhinestones, not just outfits, but rhinestones are Thousands in makeup right there, right? There's, mm -hmm. I probably have ten thousand dollars in weeks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, right. Like there's, it's, it's an investment, right? And so if people are, you know, drag in general is an investment. So if you're taking this on as a career, I highly suggest that all of your tips that you're getting, you put it right back into your art. And that's how I've gotten to where I am today. It's because I don't spend my tips on anything else other than literally going back into makeup, hair, whatever yeah. it happens to be for that day. But you know, at some point. For the both of you, at some point, um, Athena and um, Crystal, at some point, you have to start really thinking about, is this really worth it? Is is this really worth all of this? Is RuPaul Drag Race even really, really relevant to make your lives in the long run different yeah. Yeah. and better? Can you can you make a living? Can you buy yourself a house? Can you buy yourself a car? Can you afford in the next five years to just be able to live comfortably and go out into society and be accepted and knowing that you can call any club, you can call places and they will say, OK, we will book you. Yeah. Or. Should drag queens have a new perception? Because most of the time, RuPaul is putting these shows in theaters. So they're the ones really controlling your talent and controlling this machine. Yeah. So when you're on your own in your little small town from where you're from, what are you going to do? 
when your phone is not ringing. Oh, that's, yeah, 